question. So first, um, why do you think that TAS is the holy grail of quality of service? Um, Legacy has shown, also there were a couple of presentations, I think, in the past um, Congress and other Congresses that, that TAS isn't really scaling. Um, also, looking at legacy networks like FlexRails and everything, which is TDMA-based, doesn't scale. And also with CanXL, everything is more going towards priority-driven schemes. So it would be the logical consequence of equipping TAM-based T1S with a more priority-based scheme. So why do you think that TAS is, is a good solution? Yeah, so. Exactly. So the second question is um, PLCA, even, even though in, if you look at IEEE 8223, um, says it's a reconciliation layer, in, in essence it's really a Mac thing. Um, it's, it's orchestrating the media access, um, but there are two modes of operation in 8223G. So you can fall back to CSMA CD or you can have PLCA running. And as 10 t T1S is perceived, everybody probably uses PLCA because that's like giving you all these nice guarantees and so on and so forth. But um, you could probably just run all the nodes just in CSMA CD as it was in 10 base 2 and all these kind of old things. It seems somewhat logical if you have tests on top of things just to run the media access based on CSMA CD and just get rid of PLCA at all. That seems easier, right? So then you don't have the problem. The, the, there are a, a, a little difference between the CSMA CD and PLCA because PLCA avoids collisions. So, and there are some, some issues in the network the, the questions will be resolved in the CSMCD. For example, if a node breaks down and transmits in an in a, in incorrect order, so the CMS, CSMACD will, will fix it, that, that collision. In, in the normal, in the normal uh, running of the system, PLCA will solve the problem. But if have a, any, any device with an issue, the CSMACD will, will solve the collisions of, tr of transmissions. I don't know if I am able to, to answer your yeah, so, question. So uh, let me um, make, uh, phrase it a bit simpler. So you can just engineer tests in a way so that all the gates are essentially non-overlapping and that buys you media access for free. That's what I'm saying. The overlapping and not using overlapping you, uh, uh, related to TAS? Yeah, perhaps we can also discuss offline. I just don't, I don't want to just steal all the time now. Okay. All right, thank you. Steve. Thank you. Steve Carlson, employed by High Speed Design, affiliated with Robert Bosch and Ethernovia. Both of you, thank you. Very interesting presentation. David, this question is for you. Have you spoken to Pier Giorgio Baruto, who was the architect of PLCA in 10 base T1S? No. I have studied using the slides of the draft of PLCA. So I would be happy to get you his contact information if you'd like to thank speak you. to him because. I mean, he really knows this stuff. I think he'd be very interested in what you are, you are doing here. Mm -hmm. And I think the P802.3DA, which is the enhanced multi-drop project, would also be interested in this. So thank you for this work. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, I, uh, thanks for your presentation. I also have one comment. So 
Uh, I think it's also worth to look at the presentations which have been given in the IEEE because uh, when CG was defined, there were several ideas how to add priorities, for example. But after all, uh, there could not be given any use case really where we would need it because usually 10 base T1S nodes are the edge nodes and if you are collecting a temperature or whatsoever, uh, you don't really have multiple information on one sensors. So that was one point why PLCA was always good enough. And then uh, usually the nodes don't talk to each other. So it goes to a higher layer switch and then from there it's anyway treated completely differently. So I think that was finally the reason why the group decided to not put in any TAS or any uh, priority uh, management of uh, like use. Okay. Thank you. Further questions? Hi, Jakob Zwichmeyer again from TD Tech Auto. Um, we are also using Time Aware Shaper to schedule quite large systems. Um, one of the criticisms we often get is that, that it's it's very complicated scheduling problem. Uh, I want and, and my impression is always that if, if my system is large enough, uh, then scheduling a different TSN standard also becomes highly complex, uh, like credit-based shapers. I wonder what's what's your take on on, on this discussion. Uh, using our tool, you can use some artificial intelligence solutions to provide the, the optimal scheduling, because uh, you have to evaluate the system to to guarantee that all the flows meet the deadline. So we have a tool. You have to, to you must to, to be to have a tool that uh, calculate all the bounds using our uh, the solution we provide. We can must you can use a tool over, for example, in a, a artificial intelligence like a, a genetic algorithm or, or another one to to calculate or to find the optimal solution for the. TES scheduling of the whole system. It is a, a, an, a, an option to be done because m making a TES scheduling by hand is not possible. You have to, to be a tool that will provide some solution to you to, to, to achieve the correct TES schedule. All right, thanks. Uh, I'll ask you about your tool afterwards. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. So, also, you have the, uh, as I said in, in, uh, earlier, you have the chance to ask deeper questions in the speaker's corner. But I have a, a, another question to Deva Nilsson. So, what I was also impressed about uh, how you can work with uh, Brazilian universities also as a, a non-Brazilian uh, uh, company. Can you tell us in a few words um, what are the government programs in order to, to achieve uh, studies together with, with uh, external partners?
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. So now we are breaking for the first uh, coffee break. Um, please make sure that you also visit uh, the exhibition area and we will meet uh, back here at 11 o'clock. Yes, J Thank just, you. just one more question, please, from my side. I didn't see, sorry. No, no, no issue. I was wondering, since uh, PLCI is already some kind of a shaper in Timbest uh, UNS, have you run some uh, latent latency comparison between uh, PLCA using uh, TIS on top of it? And uh, see if there is any differences or noticed any differences in latency? Or is it a work that you want to do afterwards? Of uh, PLCA, uh, TAS, TAS on top of PLCA. Okay. Okay. Yes. Maybe we can talk after. Yes, the, the, okay. the, 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 the network below, shown below with red lines, are all the TES over PLCA. Okay. I think you can uh, ask yes. Deepa in the <laughs> yeah. speaker's corner. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Meet us 11 o'clock. <laughs>